the team for letting us use this space. I was telling the governor, this is where all the cool kids in our organization work. They yeah, work in this space right here. We all, the rest of us work in those stodgy offices and so forth. I'd also like to recognize one of my colleagues being here today, Dr. Beatrice Thompson. Um, Dr. Thompson um, is our longest standing council member and, and our only female, so she keeps um, eight other males in place, and so her, her role here is very important. The, um, and actually this is, uh, July 1 is a new year for us, and so um, I'm entering uh, another term. And when I be, first became mayor, I said, well, what do I have to do? And they said, one of the things we have is called uh, a marriage committee on disability. I said, cool, what do they do? And nobody really knew what they did. And so I went to a couple meetings. Um, Lisa was there, and a few other people were there. And I started figuring out, you know, why it was important to have um, uh, people in places like our committee that are looking out for those who have disability and our special needs friends because um, for me and you, a lot of times getting out of a, uh, a parking space to get on the sidewalk is easy. But sometimes for our friends with disabilities, I mean, that parking space needs to be in the right space. And I know all about grades and levels and, and so forth. So I'm very proud of what this organization has done over the years. Um, and there are organizations like this throughout the state. And so um, this particular event is something that we do annually. It was paused last year because of COVID, so we're glad to be here again in, in this spot. But from the city of Anderson's point of view, the work has been done by the people who work in this region to help people with special needs and disability is tremendous. And I see their work all the time. And Dr. Thompson's and our part, very simple, we support and um, we, we try to help and, and, and do what they need. And the, the hard work comes at the committee level, and so um, um, right now I'd like to turn the mic up to our committee chair, um, to Shea Jones, James, and she will give some remarks. I want you all to be excited for why we're actually here. And we're actually here to recognize support and shine light, not just on the businesses, but those businesses and the, the special people, the special souls that they have hired, the population that has been forgotten, the population that people have always said, all of them, you know, no one in here is that young, but we're old enough to know that it's not that far back when we remember the stigma that was on this population the names that were being called, the things people focus on, what they couldn't do instead of what they could do. So I like to refer to it as being able differently. And I want us to accept that in our mind, but also in our heart. So I want to say welcome to all of you. This is a great time. Who would have thought that we would be meeting together? I don't see a mask. Oh my. This is exciting. It's a blessing because we're looking at each other. We made it, guys. We made it to another year. So welcome to everybody. Our mayor touched on it a little bit. Um, you already have in your program the history of the committee, but I want to go into a little bit of detail about why it is we do what we do and why we're here today. So each year you have several service organizations that share in the responsibility of advocating for persons with intellectual and physical disabilities in the American workforce. We not only advocate for a chance for this population to become gainfully employed, but for them to have competitive wages and opportunities to advance within each industry. Not just one, not just food service, not just custodial, but every available industry that is available to all of us. On a local level, the Anderson Mayor's Committee has been devoted to the nomination and recognition of Anderson area businesses and employees who have set personal marks of accomplishments, change, and progression for the employment advancements of persons with disabilities or those, as I referred to earlier, able differently. 
The local nominations are then submitted to the governor's committee for statewide consideration. And on today, that's why we're here. We celebrate our, our medium and large business winners for the state, Texas Roadhouse, and Ann Health. So, we're going to push forward right into our presentation of awards. And if I could ask our honorable mayor and honorable governor to assist up here. So, for the presentation of awards. So I have the honor of discussing with you all or reading to you all my nomination. I nominated Texas Roadhouse myself. I know you didn't know that, but I did. Um, very, we take it seriously as a committee who we nominate. We all sit around as committee members and decide from our partnerships, from our experiences, who we work with. And without, a, without any hesitation, I said Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse Management hired six people with disabilities from the Anderson County Disabilities and Special Needs Board in the time frame of 2018 to 19. Now, this nomination was initially put in a year ahead. I'm going to add that there's more people now that Texas Roadhouse has hired, so thank you to work as silverware rollers, hostess, and busing tables. Through the COVID pandemic, Texas Roadhouse was committed to bringing back as many people as possible and getting the business as close to normal as possible. There were specific job carving opportunities to ensure that this population could serve as viable candidates in the workforce, such as creating a separate area for the silverware rollers in wheelchairs or those who have difficulty standing for long periods of time when performing this task. When asked the reason for hiring so many persons with disabilities, Mr. Johnson replied, we do not see disability. We hire based on attitudes that will bring a certain light to the company. In 2019, two persons with disabilities were selected from the Anderson County Disabilities and Special Needs Board as king and queen of Texas Roadhouse. Due to their love for the job, uplifting spirits, and being persons that are liked by everyone. That's rare these days. If you need more reasons why they receive the statewide recognition, Texas Roadhouse volunteers with Homes for Our Troops, which funds are raised every November. Hero cards are distributed yearly for the first responders, which includes donated meal gift cards, Texas Roadhouse participates in the Meals on Wheels fundraiser 5K1 in downtown Anderson yearly. They, are, they cater events for the National Cancer Society. There is an annual Texas Roadhouse Trump or Treat, I love it, which is held in the restaurant parking lot and all employees are encouraged to participate. Lastly, and I must say my favorite, Texas Roadhouse is being nominated due to hiring the recently incarcerated. Mr. Johnson states he believes in giving people second chances. I would not be where I am today if someone had not given me a second chance. For persons with disabilities, the fairness and equality of Texas Roadhouse has provided this population with the first, and in some situations, the most important opportunity to build skill, confidence, and independence. We salute you, Texas Roadhouse, now, please come and accept your award. Uh, briefly, uh, it's Texas Roadhouse as a company is a company about people. We do serve steaks, but that's kind of secondary. So that was uh, the way that our founder, who passed recently this past year, uh, set everything up. And we just tried to fulfill his dream daily. And uh, those people that she was speaking of are actually the light of the restaurant. They bring joy to us every day that we get to work. So thank you guys very much for the honor. Next, we will have the presentation of our Large Business Award winner. Hello, so my name is Brandon Stewart. Um, I serve on the Mayor's Committee, but also work at AMET Health. So, honored to read today the form that was submitted on, on behalf of AMET. Um, so, just kind of give you a little um, say with that. So, AMET Health has been very instrumental and employing people with disabilities, even dating back to one of our long-standing employees of 20 plus years. 
Emma Help employs um, people with disabilities in a wide range of full-time and part-time positions. Um, of course, if hired into that benefit eligible position, they have a wide range of benefits that they can choose to elect from. But one program that corresponds um, with this that is currently in place at Amen Health is Project Search. This program gives current high school students, if they step it in, a chance to have on the job hands on experience. Amen Health has had a positive interaction with previous and current Project Search interns with offers and hires, as we have a 79% placement rate compared to the national average of 64%. And with that being said, I said since then, we have actually hired a couple more of that. So it is a little bit higher than that now. Of course, um, during the COVID pandemic, we know how that changed everything. Um, a lot of Project Search classrooms were put on hold due to that. But Amen Health was able to make special accommodations to have a successful recruitment and start of the school year, which they are um, just wrapped up. Um, during the recruitment phase, Amen Health worked with the Project Search instructor and team to conduct virtual interviews through various platforms. At the start of the school year, accommodations were made in the classroom to follow mandated social distance procedures and ensure all the interns were trained and properly equipped to deal with this pandemic. Um, also, during a time of uncertainty with everything going on, um, our foundation is a strong believer with this um, Project Search team. Um, they were able to um, help make a generous contribution to Project Search to help offset those costs for the school districts as well. And the Health also took a step further and appointed one of their own as medical director over Project Search. And Med Health has had a great success with employing people with disabilities and continues to look forward to hiring more. work. With that, you know, you know and Med Health participates in the community as well, doing um, some helping with United Way, making contributions to that as well. And as you uh, probably all have seen here recently, they help with the community vaccine clinics as well, um, which is always a good thing as well. So with that. I'm going to ask and a representative or the entire group, because there's a lot of you, we love it. If you all can come so you can be presented with your award. Well, let me just say it's always dangerous to put a microphone in my hand. <laughs> I promise I won't. <laughs> I won't take a couple of moments. Um, the American College of Healthcare Executives challenged our industry uh, years ago and made it our requirement that we needed to make sure that we were engaging individuals with disabilities, and we've taken that to heart. This is our responsibility. So it makes me proud not only as a healthcare professional, but it makes me proud as a fellow citizen to know that there are companies like ours who take this. Uh, work really to heart. It's not just about getting the job done, but it's about making sure that we include everyone who can contribute. There is no I in team, and so while I stand here uh, to do this, there are others who've made this happen. If you are a member of the team who's responsible for the concept of Project Search, will the three of you please stand and remain standing? If you are in the... responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of Project Search, will you please stand? If you are if you are a member of the school districts in the state, in the, excuse me, in the, in the county of Anderson, and you are responsible for any of these young people, approximately 30 young people who completed Project Search over the last six years, will you please stand? You know, it's always good to have our friends from Columbia um, and Anderson, and um, especially high-powered people like Senator Mike Gannon. Yeah, so Mike, you, it's always good to have Mike. And, Mike. and more importantly today, is it's always good to have our governor here. Um, as you can imagine, um, he's a very busy individual. Um, and to have them take or uh, carve out uh, an hour or so to give to this committee, we certainly do appreciate that. 
without any further ado, I'd like to introduce all of the governor giving that message. We've got the great sons of Mike Gamble here. We are we depend on him heavily, so I hope he keeps sending him back. Uh, he does a great job. Uh, I'll be brief. It's, uh, it really is a pleasure to be here. I, I love Anderson. I, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when it didn't look quite as prosperous as it did. Now, way back, when it was the Electric City, way back. That was one of the, all our little towns and big cities have had ups and downs, but I can tell you we are. We are growing. One thing that we did differently that you may have noticed during the pandemic, we took it very seriously, but we wanted all our people to keep on working. Because we knew if we shut everything down, something, something won't get back up. Now in a lot of other states, they took the attitude they want to shut everything down. Everything. Even outside, somebody just planting bulbs in the garden. Shut everything down. And then let those, you know, like some hospitals and firemen and those, keep those available. We took the opposite approach and said, we want to keep everything open unless it can be shown that that is a place where the virus is spread. And we have had close contact, physical contact, barbershops, unfortunately, beauty parlors, concerts. We put limits on that, but if you look back, you'll see we put them on as, as uh, deliberately, carefully, and targeted as we could. We took them off as quickly as we did have the result. South Carolina is not only doing well, but it's actually booming. And we will continue to do that. A lot of other states, so I, I just I feel sorry for them because they're deep in the hole. And all this money coming from Washington is not going to fix it. But our state is doing well, and the main reason, just to sum it up, is because number one, we want to keep all our people working, and number two, we knew that if we gave our people, the people of South Carolina, the facts, the information, and the status of things, that they could make the right decisions, we'd be safe. Turned out we were 100% right, and that's why we're in such a good position now. I think in the next 10 years we will see enormous growth in happiness, prosperity, transformational change in some of our institutions. That would be great. But we want to keep our people working, and we know the businesses around the world that can go anywhere coming here because of the people. Sure, great research universities where they can collaborate. Best technical college system in the whole world. Everybody knows that. They say so. Mountains, the oceans, the beaches, all of that. All those things that you can't find in a lot of places. I know. I got friends out in Arizona. And we have water everywhere. Out in Arizona, they, they say the trees chase the dogs out there. They say, a little water. That's a joke, y'all. <laughs> but uh, this, uh, the recognition that we see today, this very wonderful recognition. It started a long time ago, and I was reading up that Strom Thurmond, when he was governor, he went in 1947, and uh, he was the one that, that started an official program, and it was developed and enhanced later. Jim Edwards, among others, kept going, and it's still going today. And I want to tell you something about Strom Thurmond's attitude. A lot of you may not have known him, but, but I did. And one time, this was a part of his attitude. He lived to be, as you know, 100 years old, and uh, probably with one re-election that he decided to run. He was getting a little old and he recognized that. And um, by the way, I was at a Baptist, uh, First Baptist Church in Columbia for an early 4th of July celebration and they had a man who'd been in the army. I can't remember the various battles and such that he served in. He was uh, the best looking man in the room out of about a thousand people. He's a hundred years old. He never would have known it. So if you got the right attitude, which uh, you're looking for at Roadhouse. Uh, sure, they had disabilities. A lot of people have disabilities you don't see on paper, like a poor attitude, can't get to work on time, have no loyalty or anything like that. But that's not our problem. We, we have recognized what we need to do is these two governments that I mentioned. But Strong Thurman's attitude was one that you get things done. If something needs to be done, you do it now. You do it 100%. Well, one time we were on an airplane, similar to the one that came up here on. It's a King airplane. Some of you may have been in those. A nice size fellow planes. And uh, uh, we were going to an event in Columbia, coming down from Washington, and Strom Thurmond was sitting there, and Congressman Jack Kemp was sitting there, and I was sitting here, and Congressman Arthur Adamell from Charleston was sitting here. 
And we went out and uh, the team, we were out there together. We came back on this, this private plane. The microphone was okay. On this private plane. And we got up to North Carolina and the plane started sputtering. And it was a stormy night as well. Well, the left engine, there two, one on the left, one on the right, and one on the left started sputtering. And the pilots had two experienced pilots. And they started looking at each other and they started radioing, radioing down to Raleigh. Saying, oh, we have a problem with the left end. And the pilot said, one thing led to another, and the plane was dipping and diving. And they said, we're going to feather the left engine. Oh, Mr. Mayor, you must know what that means. I didn't know what that meant. They said, go turn it off. <laughs> so they turned off the uh, left engine, and the plane was dipping and diving. And Congressman Ravenel was looking out the window, and he just pulled down the shade. Jack Kemp was about petrified. His eyes were as big as saucer. You know, he was a quarterback for New York and all that. He was a famous man. Not scared of anything, but he was scared of that airplane. <laughs> I looked over at Strom Thurmond, and he had the Wall Street Journal in his hands. And he put it down and looked at all of us and says, Boys, no point in getting excited. There's not a thing in the world you can do that. Went right on. <laughs> <laughs> and it occurred to me at that time that there's some things you can do something about. And the other things you can't do anything about. Well, that was one we couldn't do anything about. We landed and rented a jet, by the way, and then came on with the moon, and everybody was happy. But this recognizing the ability of our people, the magnitude of the work available in South Carolina, and that which is coming, and it's all wrapped up together, is something that we, are, we do through events and organizations like this. And I'll finish with, a, with another little story. Just to emphasize how lucky we are. And I say always tell the children, when they, any of the children, tell them to be proud of South Carolina because this is the best place in the whole world to live, work, and raise a family. And here's a little story to help you remember. They tell me there was a preacher, and he was a, he was a supply preacher, and he was going around in one of the big denominations, and he was up, up north in some places, Michigan. So anyway, he went to, he noticed in one of the churches in the building behind the church was a payphone. Everybody remember what a payphone is? Mike, you remember what a payphone is? <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, he saw that little sign that says, calls to heaven, $10. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, later on in another state, saw another church had the same little sign, calls to heaven, $10. So he started looking as he'd go from church to church and in, in his in his work there, he'd look, and sometimes he could find it. I think he'd say take phones, sometimes he'd say, calls to heaven, $10. Well, he came to South Carolina, went into the church, thought he'd go take a look, went back there, had a little sign by the phone, showed up, said, calls to heaven, 10 cents. And so he asked the preacher, he says, what is it? See, the other places charge us $10 and all that. And here in South Carolina, it's 10, 10 cents to call to heaven. Why is that? He said, because in South Carolina, that's a local. <laughs> we got to remember that and don't ever underestimate yourselves or the people of South Carolina. Because as, uh, as Mark Clark, the great general of World War II, late President Senator, said, and I quote, he said, there's more patriotism in South Carolina than any place in the world. And patriotism translates into loyalty, translates into determination, translates into good neighbors, and translate into success. And that's what we have. And I thank you for recognizing the success of my team. Thank you. So tell me why it's important for for businesses and for the city and the county that the work you do to get people who have disabilities to get back to work. We have a good collaborative here with the city and the county vote rehab, uh, disabilities and special needs, but now that we have an abundance of jobs, if we all work together, we can get all of our people working. And how important is it for you and what you do to have these awards things every year to recognize the businesses that are doing it? We want to keep the momentum going. We've got a great, this started with Walgreens Distribution Center back in 2007, and uh, we want to get 20 to 30 percent of people with disabilities back into the workforce. So this is what we're striving toward. We're at goal, but we want to go higher. And for somebody that might have a family member or themselves that has a disability and wants to get to work, how can they get in touch with you and what can they find out? If you're in the Anderson area, please call South Carolina Vocational Rehabilitation Office, 864-224-6391.
Thanks. How important is it to, to provide services and jobs for our disabled citizens in South Carolina? Well, I think it's, I think it's very important. What, what we've learned over the years is that we have a lot of a lot of citizens and people who want to work and are quite able to work. They may have one limitation or disability, but they are, are just as, as uh, important to the workforce and just as able to the workforce as anybody else. And once we recognize that, it's, it's all a question of awareness because the uh, businesses, companies, uh, institutions all over the country and in South Carolina that have made an effort to, to seek out people with various uh, disabilities and they will, everyone will tell you that it was a, one of the best decisions that they made. So we just want everyone to know South Carolina is a place where people work. We open for business, we never close. Uh, all our, our people are different from people in the rest of the country and that they are they determined, they keep their word, and, and they, they want to work. So we want to be sure that everybody has that opportunity.